This is not ice melting into a mountain river. This is what happens when thousands of cubic meters of sewage are discharged into a river in the Gaza Strip. Thousands of liters of untreated wastewater pour into the Wadi Gaza River every day. The polluted water snakes through urban areas towards the sea. It jeopardizes the health of many families living beside it, contaminates the coast, and endangers biodiversity. This is my house. It's only about 50 meters away from a river full of sewage. My family's been living here since 1948. I've got five children. My five brothers also live here, and they each have six children. We all suffer from the sewage problem day in, day out. Our children have fungal infections and parasites. That's why they're always scratching themselves. They also catch a lot of flyborne diseases. We have a well, but we can't use it for drinking or for washing our clothes. It smells of sewage. The sewage has not only affected our well, it's made life a misery for everyone living in this area. The wastewater constantly runs through populated areas before pouring into the Mediterranean. There are 16 sewage outfalls along the seashore in the Strip. The population in the Gaza Strip also suffers from a serious lack of sanitation. In many of Gaza's poorer neighborhoods, homes are not connected to sewers at all. This is true of the Swedish village, a small community near Rafa in southern Gaza, where 100 families live in uncomfortable conditions. The housing is not connected to main drains, and everyone has to buy drinking water, because the tap water is too salty to drink. Our village has 500 inhabitants, around 100 families. For nearly three years, the water was soft enough to drink, but then it became too salty, so now we have to buy water. I sometimes have to pay one shekel or even one and a half shekels to fill a jerry can. I economize on the use of water, and we use it only for drinking. If I had to use it for drinking and cooking, one shekel a day wouldn't be enough. For many Gazans, buying a water filter is prohibitively expensive, and so they cannot afford to purify water in their homes. Living in a polluted environment directly undermines health and hygiene in the poorest communities in the Strip. Most families cannot afford to replace damaged tanks or broken pipes. Some do not even have enough money to pay water bills. I don't throw the water I use for washing and doing the dishes into the cesspit. It's only for wastewater. I've lived in this village for the past 40 years, and we've suffered from the sewage problem for 21 of them. As you see, this sewage comes from the latrine. When the main cesspit is full, I dig a new hole near it and empty the sewage into it. To bring a septic truck to clean the pit is expensive. A hundred or 150 shekels. No one can afford that. There are other priorities, such as feeding my children and providing them with clean water. What's worse, all the streets are made of sand, and everyone throws their dirty water onto the streets. Water used to clean the house, wash the dishes or clothes. The children play and dig in the sand. Quite frankly, my children and my neighbor's children suffer from worms, amoebic diseases, scabies and other skin infections. Children living in this kind of environment are likely to suffer from life-threatening gastroenteritis. They're also exposed to many other types of viruses and bacteria. Hepatitis A is widespread in the country in general, and especially in places where there are open sewers. 
the Giardia cysts and amoeba commonly found in wastewater seriously damage children's health. We have other serious problems, insects, rodents, mice, flies. We can never get rid of the flies, even after cleaning the house. The population of the Gaza Strip will top 2 million by 2020, and it will need access to water resources. Continuing urban growth will place additional pressure on the aquifer and wastewater systems. Radical measures must be taken soon to cover residents' needs. The Gaza Strip is, is, a, uh, is a small piece of land where uh, it has uh, the most uh, intensive population, maybe in the, not only in the region, but also in the world. We are facing a big challenge, which is facing the increased demand of the population on water. But also, we are trying to, at the same time, to face the problem of pollution that is coming mainly uh, from the sewage that we need to uh, not only to, uh, to avoid more pollution to the underground water, but also this is a non-conventional water resource. This is a national, national resource that needs to be an optimum way to utilize. To address the problem of untreated water, the International Committee of the Red Cross and the local water authorities jointly constructed a wastewater treatment plant in Rafa. The construction of the plant started in 2008. At that time, we were at the tightest period of the closure on Gaza. The closure would result in an availability of construction material on the market. We wanted to build it, but we didn't have enough cement for the concrete, uh, all what was requested, electromechanical equipment, all what was necessary. In 2008, when the wall separating Gaza and Egypt was demolished, our engineers came up with the idea of reusing the fragments of the demolished wall for building the essential infrastructure of the plant. So they cope with the lack of cement, reusing the fragment of the wall for constructing the main points and all the main infrastructure of the treatment plant. This is a big investment which was identified uh, in the, late in the last century talking about the need to, to build up a seawater desiccation facility as a main source sustainable for water, uh, to build up a free wastewater uh, treatment plant that needs to be uh, highly qualified to keep uh, reutilizing this valuable source of water at least for agriculture, but if it is possible also to be re recharged to the aquifer to upgrade more the only resource of water that we have, uh, uh, the aquifer. The construction of the treatment plant, it's a great achievement and a huge improvement of the sanitary conditions of Rafa city. However, people in Gaza have the right to access as well more advanced technologies as in other parts of the world and not only resort to emergency solutions. Today we have already started with some applications and we have planted more than 1,000 trees in this compound, in the surroundings of the treatment plant, and all these trees are irrigated with water that is treated in the plant. In Han Yunis, a group of farmers have already started to use treated wastewater from a plant constructed by ICRC to irrigate their crops. One of these farmers is Fawaz Abu Ziada, who has achieved excellent results. We bought this land before two years, and it was there is nothing to grow here because there is no water. So we went to the authorities and the government and the, we explained for them our problem. So they explained for us uh, that uh, we can use treated water. The good side of this water, it is available always, cheap. We can uh, have this water in two to three hours every day. Uh, after one year, 
we hope this tree to be big enough and we can cultivate the fruits of this uh, trees and we can use it in the market and it can help us in uh, uh, developing the area or developing our uh, agriculture uh, site of this land. When will we be able to take a shower and not worry where the water's going, or wash the dishes and not worry that the cesspit is full? We need a real solution to tackle this problem, but when will we get it?